and answer every question from January 6th. Far from it. But it does prove beyond doubt that Democrats in Congress, assisted by Adam Kinzinger and Liz Cheney, lied about what happened that day. They are liars. That is conclusive. And that fact should prevent them from ever being taken seriously again. We're going to begin tonight with footage that shows you what was actually happening inside the Capitol. The footage does not show an insurrection or a riot in progress. Instead, it shows police escorting protesters through the building, including the now infamous QAnon shaman. Watch. These are the pictures you've seen of January 6th. They're familiar because they've been playing on a loop on every media outlet in America for the last two years. There's a reason for that. But it turns out there's quite a bit of video you haven't seen. And that video tells a very different story about what happened on January 6th. More than 40,000 hours of surveillance footage from in and around the Capitol have been withheld from the public. And once you see the video, you'll understand why. Taken as a whole, the video record does not support the claim that January 6th was an insurrection. In fact, it demolishes that claim. And that's exactly why the Democratic Party and its allies in the media prevented you from seeing it. By controlling the images you were allowed to view from January 6th, they controlled how the public understood that day. They could lie about what happened, and you would never know the difference. Those lies had a purpose. They created a pretext for a federal crackdown on opponents of the Uniparty in Washington. Our office wanted to ensure that there was shock and awe that we could charge as many people as possible. The first thing you notice from viewing the full video record of January 6th is just how many people entered the Capitol building that day. Hundreds and hundreds of people, possibly thousands, over the course of about two hours. The crowd was enormous. A small percentage of them were hooligans. They committed vandalism. You've seen their pictures again and again. But the overwhelming majority weren't. They were peaceful. They were orderly and meek. These were not insurrectionists. They were sightseers. Footage from inside the Capitol overturns the story you've heard about January 6th. Protesters queue up in neat little lines. They give each other tours outside the Speaker's office. They take cheerful selfies and they smile. They're not destroying the Capitol. They obviously revere the Capitol. They're there because they believe the election was stolen from them. They believe in the system. Here's the man you've heard referred to as the QAnon shaman outside the Senate chamber. These are not rioters. These are people who wandered over from a political rally. We will not let them silence your voices. After the rally, they walked down Pennsylvania Avenue, where organizers had secured a federal permit to hold a legal rally on the grounds of the Capitol. I know that everyone here will soon be marching over to the Capitol building to peacefully and patriotically make your voices heard. Once at the Capitol building, things began to get chaotic. Capitol police officers fired tear gas into the crowd. A few at the front of the herd broke windows. Someone opened the doors, and many hundreds of others just walked in. We're going to make that the story. Of course, they did make it the story. And at the center of it, the single most famous person arrested that day was a Navy veteran from Arizona called Jacob Chansley, often referred to as the QAnon shaman. The so-called QAnon shaman. QAnon shaman. Someone named Q shaman. Jacob Chansley became the face of January 6th a dangerous conspiracy theorist dressed in outlandish costume who led the violent insurrection to overthrow American democracy. For these crimes, Chansley was sentenced to nearly four years in prison, far more time than many violent criminals now receive. What did Jacob Chansley do to receive this punishment? To this day, there is dispute over how Chansley got into the Capitol building. But according to our review of the internal surveillance video, it is very clear what happened once he got inside. Virtually every moment of his time inside the Capitol was caught on tape. The tapes show that Capitol Police never stopped Jacob Chansley. They helped him. They acted as his tour guides. Here's video of Chansley in the Senate chamber. Capitol Police officers take him to multiple entrances and even try to open locked doors for him. We counted at least nine officers who were within touching distance of unarmed Jacob Chansley. Not one of them even tried to slow him down. Chansley understood that Capitol Police were his allies. Video shows him giving thanks for them in a prayer on the floor of the Senate. Watch. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for paying the inspiration needed to these police officers. 
officers to allow us into the building. Contrast the reality of what Jacob Chansley did in the Capitol building on January 6th, the indisputable facts recorded on video, some of which has never before been seen, with the depiction of Jacob Chansley that you've seen in the media for more than two years. He's a terrorist, they said. He should be killed. Shoot him. Yeah. Shoot him. Like, if it, you burst into the United States, hey, if he was dressed like bin Laden, would you have shot him? Shoot him. Shoot him. It makes you wonder, who are the violent extremists here? Not Jacob Chansley. And the video proves that. But you would never have known from the media coverage. The people sitting in the chairs need to be sitting in a jail cell. Chansley is in a jail cell. He's been there for months. If he was, in fact, committing such a grave crime, why didn't the officers who were standing right next to him place him under arrest? Until now, no one could even prove that even happened. But it did. 